Profit is the applause you get for creating a motivating environment. Hi, everyone. It's Kara Golden from The Kara Golden Show. And I am here with my next pair of guests. Very, very thrilled to have Ken Blanchard and Randy Conley here. So they are the co-authors of this amazing book that if you're watching us on YouTube, I'll give you a little glimpse of the cover there. It's called Simple Truths of Leadership and 52 Ways to Be a Servant Leader and Build Trust. I received the book and I have to say it was so amazing. So many tips, even uh, coming from somebody who reads lots and lots of leadership uh, books. Uh, this one was definitely one that you should absolutely pick up. So uh, many of you have heard of Ken Blanchard. He was, a, a, he is a big speaker, a business consultant and author of dozens of books, but maybe the one that, that I don't know where you've been if you haven't heard of this book, but One Minute Manager uh, was a book that sold over 23 million copies over the years. And uh, I definitely read it many years ago. I, uh, in, I think in college was the first place that I picked it up and it definitely uh, got me thinking about being a better leader and what attracts people to leaders and how to continue being a leader because I think especially as times change and and different things change uh, it's important to keep up on those skills but again that book was just a one that is it's iconic and I'm excited to for him to put this book together with Randy Connolly Randy um, has also had incredible work um, they've been working together for a while too, and has done quite a bit um, of thinking on this simple truth of leadership. So we will definitely hear more from Randy as well. So welcome to the two of you. Thank you, Karen. Good. It's good to be with you. Yeah, it's great to be here. Awesome. So you're both renowned uh, thought leaders and business experts, and you work together. Tell us more about the mission behind the Ken Blanchard companies. Well, our mission is really to help people create an organization where everybody loves to be. And as a result, they also love to take care of their customers. A lot of people think that the reason for being in business is to make profit. No, profit is the applause you get for creating a motivating environment for your people so they take good care of your customers. Absolutely. So, Randy, when did you guys connect together? I started working with Ken over 25 years ago. And... Uh, I actually, as I was going through school, I, one of his textbooks that he wrote uh, many, many years ago called The Management of Organizational Behavior was one of my core textbooks. And I remember really identifying with this Blanchard guy and his teachings on leadership, you know, what it means to lead in a situational manner and sort of leading with a focus on others rather than on yourself. and. It was sort of a God thing in my life that I was uh, directed towards uh, Ken's company. And it, it's just been a wonderful journey over the last 25 years getting to work with Ken and more importantly, learn under him and and work alongside him. That's amazing. And you are also the the author of the award-winning Leading with Trust blog, which is if you have not signed up for his blog and definitely you should do that too. And there's so many leadership tips in there and you get to talk to lots of top experts on that blog as well. So before we dive into the newest books, so the One Minute Manager is one of the top business books selling over 23 million copies. It's a classic. What is it about leadership that never changes? Well, I think the big thing, Kara, is that my mission statement begins with, I want to be a loving teacher of simple truths. And so I've been constantly looking at what are the simple things. And I ran into Spencer Johnson, who wrote children's books, you know. And he was working on a one-minute scolding with a psychiatrist. And I invited him to a session uh, that I was doing. And after he sat in the back and laughed, he came running up and said, let's forget parenting. Let's do the one-minute manager. And uh, we just felt that there were three simple things that if people remembered 
that takes care of about 80% of what you need to know to be an effective manager. One minute goal setting, all good performance starts with clear goals. Once goals are set, you ought to wander around and see if you can catch people doing things right and give them a one minute praising. If they uh, make a mistake and it's not going in the direction, go wander around and, and give them a one minute redirect, you know, or redirect their behavior. And uh, it's just been, uh, and it was a parable. And the only business parable there, there was ever written at that time, you know, because it was parables, John, the livings and seagulls and the littlest parents, but uh, there was no parables in our field. And so we were the first uh, in the parable. And people love short books that they can read. We said if you couldn't read it by the flight from San Diego to San Francisco, it was too long. Absolutely. So the simple truths of leadership. So why is today the best time to remind leaders about the simple truths? Well, Kara, one of the things that we think gets in the way of effective leadership is us, individuals, our own ego, you know, and we we tend to make leadership much more complicated than it needs to be. And especially in today's current environment with just so much rapid change, you know, technological change is going crazy, societal change, everything that we've had to deal with during the pandemic. Uh, people can't handle everything that's coming at them. And when that's the case, if you can get back in touch with the simple truths that are proven time and time again that lead to leadership success, that's where we can focus. It gives everybody a way to cut through all the noise that's going on out there, you know, and get back to the basics because like Ken discovered with the one minute manager, 80% of what's going to get you there to achieve your goals is those fundamental, simple truths about leadership. So we, we have a lot of people who listen to this podcast who are entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. uh, many people who have not led teams, had a great idea. What do you think is kind of the key thing for new leaders to know? I mean, is this the book for new leaders? Is this the book for existing leaders that need a refresher course? I mean, how do you think about leadership? I think it's really for all people, including young people, old people. And uh, here I was into servant leadership for a while. And, and one of the things I found is that if you are a servant leader, it's all about we rather than me. And that builds trust. And then Randy, of course, that's been his area of, of thing. And we said, OK, how do we get the simple truths out there? And the book is so easy to read because on one page, there'll be a simple truth, you know, like uh, uh what you need to use is different strokes for different folks if you want to be an effective leader. And then the next page tells why people don't use it because people get hung up on one leadership style and all. And then at the bottom of that facing page says, how do you turn uh, you know, common sense into common practice? And there's 26 of those little things on servant leadership and there's 26 on trust. And so people have been reading it said, wow, this is fabulous. I can share this with my people. We can read one simple truth a week or we can read a couple and all. And boy, I've had people say, boy, I need to give it to my teenage kids, you know, because they ought to know about leadership. But they can't read any complicated book, but they can read something like this with all these little truths face to face with a simple truth and then a discussion about that. And as I think of entrepreneurs, Kara, I think of individuals who are bootstrapping, you know, from the ground up. Uh, when you're getting started in your business, you're the one person band, right? You're doing it all. You're the marketer. You're the salesperson. You're the accountant. You're the product developer. You're the creative genius. You're everything. And as your business starts to expand and you're naturally having to bring on others or collaborate with other folks, your entrepreneurship quickly evolves into relationship management, right? You have to understand how to get your product services ideas out to the marketplace, and you do that through others. So you need to know how to influence others in a very effective way. 
And all of the simple truths that we share in our book will help you do the basics of what it takes to have effective uh, relationships. And, and we believe, Ken and I strongly believe at our very core, that leadership is about service. You lead others by being of service to them, help them win and achieve their goals. And in turn, all those good things come back to you and, and you end up succeeding as well. One of the chapters that really hit me, uh, it, it's sort of a pet peeve, I, I guess, as I say, and with my teams over the years is admitting the, the mistakes, mm. whether you're a leader or whether you're in a support role, I think not actually owning a mistake. And I, I see this a lot in entrepreneurs or people who are right out of school. I think it's, it's something that people, maybe there's a, you know, cover up, they, they wouldn't call it that, but they don't want to admit that they've done something wrong. Yeah. And actually, I think that the key to an incredible human is admitting that you made a mistake yeah. and you're trying to figure out how to move forward. So what, what would you say about that? I would say there are few things that an individual can do that builds more trust than admitting their mistake. Rather than viewing an admission of a mistake as a weakness, it's actually an immense strength because people see you um, for being an authentic person who's willing to own up to their actions and is willing to learn. And uh, Ken, a great colleague of Ken and ours is uh, Gary Rich. And at WD40, he's the CEO of WD40. He has shifted their culture from one that looks as mistakes as something to be embarrassed about to learning moments. Ken, you want to talk about Gary's approach to learning moments? Yeah, he said that there's no, from now on, there's no mistakes in WD-40. There are only learning opportunities or learning moments. And it's really amazing, you know, because people will try to cover up mistakes, but now they'll come to Gary and say, boy, do we have a learning moment on this morning, you know, and it might have been a big mistake. And you say, well, good, what are we going to learn from it? What an amazing uh, thing. And uh, it just kind of opens the thing up. I wrote a book with Colleen Barrett, who took over the presidency of Southwest after Herb Keller stepped down. And one of her favorite sayings is that people admire your skills, but they love your vulnerability. And I think the vulnerability is that, is what Randy's saying, is admitting that something went mis went wrong and rather than saying it's a mistake, let's call it a learning opportunity, because if we don't all have learning opportunities, we're in big trouble. <laughs> yeah, I think that's absolutely correct. As, as we were discussing right before, I launched a book uh, just over a year ago called Undaunted, and that is a lot of what the book is about, about, uh, you know, owning your failures, uh, also uh, pushing forward, getting over those walls, being an authentic leader. Um, I think that people respond better when they know that that you're not perfect and that you're willing to jump in and you're willing to help. I mean, gone are the leaders that can sit in glass offices and never come out. Yeah. Uh, so I think that those are the people that people really want to follow. You had mentioned something about the word trust mm. and, and you talk about it in your book too. So if trust is broken, can it actually be reworked? Can it come back? I mean, I guess, and and frankly, I think it's both ways. Yeah. Whether the trust is broken as a leader, um, the trust is broken, um, you know, with somebody who is an employee and support, however you want to view it. Uh, what do you think? Can those things be replaced? Do you just have to X these people out? How do you guys think about that? Yeah, I want to say a resounding yes, trust can be rebuilt. You know, one of the myths about trust, and we've all heard it, we've probably said it ourselves, is trust takes a long time to build and just a moment to break, right? And if that's the case, then I would argue that the trust was probably not that strong to begin with, right? If, if it can break just like that. Now, when we talk about broken trust, it ranges on a continuum from something very minor, right? To the other end of the spectrum, a betrayal, which is much more difficult to recover from, but it can still be done. And um, 
an effective way to approach rebuilding trust is to first understand what aspect of trust was violated. And research shows that there are four key elements of trust in a relationship. There is uh, what we like to call your ability. You know, are you competent in what you're doing? There's the aspect of believability. Are you a person of integrity? Can you, are you a believable person? The third element of trust is connected. Do you care about people? And the fourth element is dependable. Do you follow through? Do you honor your commitments? So when trust has been eroded, you look at those four elements and you say, which element has been broken here? And then to get back on track, you can focus on what are the behaviors that need to be addressed to repair that element of trust. And so first you acknowledge, number one, that you have a low trust situation. Number two, you apologize for whatever your role was in creating that situation. And then finally, you have to act. You have to act differently in a way that rebuilds and restores trust. You know, that apology carries really. We ended up writing a book called The One Minute Apology, you know, and made it the fourth secret of the one minute manager, because it is so powerful when both leaders and the people that work with them, when they uh, do something that's wrong, as they're willing to admit it and say, I apologize for what I did. And now apology combined with forgiveness is a one-two punch, isn't it, Randy? Yeah, it sure is. One of one of my personal favorite truths in our book is the simple truth that forgiveness is letting go of all hopes for a better past. Forgiveness is letting go of all hopes for a better past. We can't change what has happened, right? And somehow we believe this myth that Withholding forgiveness from others is a way to retain power over them, right? Somehow that it's hurting the other person who offended us. It only hurts us. We're the only ones that we're injuring. And so when we can get beyond that, embrace forgiveness, focus on restoring trust in a relationship, it frees us up. We're able to move forward in a much more healthy and productive way rather than holding on to those past hurts. Interesting. What do you think is the best leadership style out there? I mean, what, how would you characterize that? There is no one best leadership style. The best leadership style is a flexible style. It changes their style depending on the competence and commitment of the person you're dealing with. You know, do they have the skills to do this job? Are they motivated and all? And if somebody's an enthusiastic beginner, you know, they, they're excited, but they don't know what they're doing. You better give them direction. And if they're a disillusioned learner, you know, you ought to give them both direction and support. If they're capable, but a little cautious about doing something completely on their own without support, give them support. And finally, you get to the person who is a high achiever, uh, you know, that has both competence and commitment, and you can delegate uh, to them. So it's different strokes for different folks. And we talk about that in the book. And it's also different strokes for the same folks on different parts of their job because they might have five different responsibilities and they could be at five different, you know, it could be at different development levels on each of those. And so you don't want to give the same style all the time. Absolutely. So how does gender play into leadership? How do you lead women versus men? Do you see a difference in how people respond? I think that's one of the beauties of a situational approach to leadership is you focus on the needs of the person, right? What is that person's needs rather than, you know, labeling them as, oh, women need this kind of leadership style or men need this or, you know, whatever categorization you want to put on someone, it's really what does that person need based on their competence and commitment towards the work they're doing? And if you can diagnose that, then you can flex your leadership style to match what they need. It's all about matching your style to what a person needs in the moment to help them move along the path to achieving their goals. I think that's absolutely right. One of the things that we also talk a lot about is, uh, you know, there's a lot of millennials in the workforce today. They're dealing with uh, 
Gen Xers like me. And uh, now we've got, I actually have no Gen X. (laughs) Yeah. And I I've got four Gen Zers coming in and I've, I've, I could write a book on Gen Z all different. uh, But I think like the key thing that I've seen with Gen Z really has to do with how they've been taught Mm. in schools that you can, there's not a lot of lecture situations that the Gen Z audience is in. They, they have to participate. And so, Mm. um, and so walking into an environment, a work environment and being told go and do this task um, seems very uh, out of sync for them. They don't feel like they're contributing in some way. Yeah. Have you seen? Yeah, we found, we, we yeah. found that very much so. And, and in the old days, it was top-down leadership. People mm-hmm. looked up the hierarchy because that's where all the brains were. The young people want side-by-side leadership. They don't want your job but they want to be able to contribute and give suggestions and all. And so when you reach out to them in a servant leadership style, which is about we, not me, they go, wow, you know, and you can even say to them, God, we got this problem. I wish I knew all the answers. I need your help. Rather than saying, I wonder why that idiot's the manager. They go, boy, this is going to be a fun place because they want side by side leadership, not top down. I think that's I think that's so key. So one of the things that I I bet either of you could answer is uh, I always ask our guests, tell me a story that maybe you've heard from uh, a leader where they faced a big challenge or failure, but they somehow uh, learned a lot of lessons from it. Do you have one in particular that is uh, comes to mind? I can share a personal story, you know, about the power of trust. And that was early in my career at Blanchard, um, my leader at the time, her name was Barbara Hart. Barbara came to me and said, Randy, this project with a very well-known pharmaceutical company that was one of our largest clients at the time, she said, Randy, this project's going off the rails and they're threatening to pull their business and we're going to lose the account. I need you to fly to New York on Monday. This was on a Friday. She came to me. I need you to fly to New York on Monday, meet with the client team and some other Blanchard colleagues and try to get this back on track. And I said to her, I said, Barbara, are you asking me or telling me? (laughs) And she said, I'm telling you, you need to go. And I'm thinking to myself, why is she sending this, this young greenhorn, you know, to go and help save one of our top accounts. Right. And long story short, I go there along with a few other teammates. We totally turn things around. Uh, The client becomes even more loyal and invested in us. And it's a great success. And it was that moment of trust that Barbara knew that I had what it took to help this situation. And she took a risk, which is the very definition of trust. You're taking a risk. You're extending something that you value to someone else in hopes that they're going to treat it with respect, care, and follow through and reward your trust. And that really illustrated to me early in my career, the value of trust. And that's a hard thing for some leaders, especially high achieving, hard charging leaders that are, you know, sort of the classic type A, want to control and micromanage everything. That can be a hard concept that really what's going to lead to long term success is learning how to let go and trust others, because then your leadership becomes a force multiplier, right? You can't be everywhere all the time. You're multiplying your capabilities through all the people you're leading. And that starts with extending trust to others. Absolutely. That's a great example. And I do think that the more that you can enable your leadership to other people, the easier your life will be. (laughs) Right. I mean, I mean, if we're being honest, there's a little selfishness in there too, right? It's like a thousand you want to make your job a little bit easier too. And you can only do that if you trust others and 
part of trusting them is not just blindly sending them off, right? It's developing them. It's training them. It's giving them the tools, the resources to be successful. Then you send them out. And, you know, that's where the magic happens. We had a wonderful example of, of uh, leadership from our son. He, he took over his presidency of our company uh, right before COVID. <laughs> and so COVID hits and suddenly we're 40 percent down in sales and all. And uh, in 2000, we maybe did, you know, 10 or 15 uh, online programs a month. This last month, we did 900 online programs. And he brought in high tech people to take all of our curriculum and put it online, which was an amazing uh, task. But uh, this last year was our best year in the history of the company. You know, we have you know, 250 employees and we're around the, around the world. And so it was quite a, quite a feat to turn that from 40% down to, to great. But it did, did to say, we got to do something different. If we stay with the direction we're going, we're in big trouble. That's exactly right. And, and definitely uh, the new generation of leadership, it's, uh, it seems so obvious to them to bring in some of those, um, you know, new ways of doing business. But I think it's, it's definitely a, uh, the plus side of COVID, I think, for many, many businesses, if they, if they embrace change. Um, you mentioned flexibility uh, in mm -hmm. leadership, too, and being able to kind of pass the reins a little bit to do things because, uh, what's the worst that can happen, right? As I right. always say, I mean, you've got to go and try. So, well, this is right. an unbelievable interview and book. I feel so fortunate to have you both here. Everybody pick up a, couple, a copy of and pick Simple Truth. a Truths couple of, copies, yeah. A couple <laughs> copies for your team, Simple Truths of Leadership. And where can people find out more about, well, obviously everyone knows the book, bookstores, Amazon. Uh, where can people uh, learn more about the Ken Blanchard companies too? Yeah, a couple of uh, helpful places that people can start for more information about the book and where they can find it, what the book is about, simpletruthsofleadership.com. So title of the book.com. That'll get you there. If you want to learn more about the work that we do as the Ken Blanchard companies, kenblanchard.com. Check that out and you'll, you'll get the whole scoop on all the ways that we help organizations unleash the potential and power of their people. I love it. Well, thank you so much and for both joining us this morning. And thanks, everyone, for listening. We're here every Monday and Wednesday. Uh, don't forget to subscribe so you get to see exactly who's coming on for the week. There's so many stories and lessons I bring on only the best authors and, and books that are out there and definitely give this a five-star review because we all know that those five stars really change the algorithm for the podcast. We are actually heard worldwide. So if you're listening and uh, you have, have not heard this, please, this podcast, please pass it on to some of your friends as well. We, uh, we love hearing from people and a shameless plug. I mentioned my book, Undaunted Overcoming Doubts and Doubters, uh, definitely an operational hands-on, uh, definitely a uh, coming from an entrepreneur, somebody who's led a company, built a company, all of those things. So hopefully you'll get a chance to pick it up or get it on Audible. And last but not least, I have to Tell everybody, pick up a case of Hint. There you go. Uh, Ken, you've got to try Hint as well and uh, and add it to your refrigerator because it's, uh, it's a great drink and we're really excited to be helping people get healthier. So thanks, everyone. Have a great week.